Hello again and welcome to another screencast on reducing an integer modulo n. Now before we go on I want to just warn you that this is a subject, a concept that's actually not treated in section 3.1 of the Sundstrom textbook. It comes up in other forms a little later in the book but I think it might be helpful and we certainly can handle it to pull it forward a little bit. I think it's going to make our lives easier uh, to understand this concept coming up. So what is this concept of reducing an integer modulo n? Wanted to go back to the last screencast and the concept check you saw where we were looking for integers that were congruent to 2 modulo 9. And remember, for two integers to be congruent, or for an integer to be congruent to 2 modulo 9, I would have to have 9 dividing the difference between that integer and 2. And any of these in this list suffice. I've added a few more to the list than since the concept check. I think we stopped at negative 7. And any of these numbers will work. Right? 38 also works. Negative 16 also works. Once you have one of these numbers that's congruent to 2 mod 9, it's easy to generate infinitely many of them because they are all separated by 9 units. And so there are actually infinitely many numbers that are congruent to 2 mod 9, and they all have the same property that they're separated by 9 units each. Now, we want to use this idea and the listing idea to generate a pretty important concept here. Let me just go and look at, what if I change the question up? Okay, Let's look at 16 mod 5. What are some integers that are congruent to 16 mod 5? And again, what that would mean is that 5 divides the difference between 16 and whatever integer I have. Anything that I could plug in for A that makes the difference between 16 and A divisible by 5 will work. Now one such number is definitely the number 16 itself. 16 is going to be congruent to itself mod 5 because 16 minus 16 is 0 and 5 divides 0. Okay, so it's actually easy to come up with one answer to this. It's just the number itself. And like we said, if we can come up with one of these, we can come up with infinitely many of them just by adding 5 onto the one we have. So another number that would be another integer that would be congruent to 16 mod 5 would be 21. And you can very easily see this. The difference between 16 and 21 is equal to 5. And so 5 certainly divides that. Uh, other numbers would be 26 and on and on we go, 31 and so forth infinitely many of them. Now what's interesting here is to go backwards. If I go backwards I would have 11 would be congruent to and 11 and 16 would be congruent mod 5. Also uh, 6 also 1, and if I go back any farther, I'm going to go under 0. I'm going to go negative, so negative 4, you know, negative 9, and so forth. Keep your eye on this number right here, the smallest non-negative integer in this list. That will become important. Let's ask the same question using 121 mod 8. Now 121, as we kind of to use the general idea from above, 121 is certainly one of those integers that's congruent to 121. If two integers are equal, they are definitely congruent to each other, mod really anything, but in 8 in this case. Uh, let's We could push forward in this. You know, 129 would also be congruent to 121 because their difference is divisible by 8, also 137 and so forth. But I want to go back to this idea of what's the smallest non-negative number in this list. There is no smallest number in this list because it continues off to the left forever. But what's the smallest non-negative number in that list? Well, let's back it up here. I'll skip a little bit as we get close to the end. 113 would be congruent to 121 mod 8. Uh, 105 would be next. And let's just skip a little while. And I'll keep going. And I will uh, get to 17 eventually. 17 and 121. Uh, the difference between 17 and 121 is 104. And that is divisible by 8. Uh, it's, uh, it's 13 times 8. So if we keep going backwards, I would have 9, then 1, and then the next integer backwards in the list would be negative. Okay, so again, there is this least non-negative integer that's congruent to 121 mod 8, and in this case it happens to be 1 again. Another example, let's start with a negative number and ask, okay, of the infinitely many numbers, integers, that are congruent to negative 10 mod 4, which one is the least non-negative one in the list, the smallest that is either 0 or positive. So let's start with negative 10. That is congruent to itself mod 4, and this time we'll have to go up. another The next number up the list that's congruent to 10 mod 4 would be the number negative 6. The next one up the list would be negative 2, and the next number up the list is positive 2. 
and that is the the next one up the list to be six and ten. So two is the least non-negative, the smallest non-negative integer that is congruent to negative ten mod four. And again, you can see that it's two and negative ten really are congruent modulo four because their difference is negative twelve, which is a multiple of four. So that leads us to a theorem, and I'd like to state this without proof at this point. We will be able to pick up the proof for this later on. Just to give you the idea, use the examples to convince yourself this is true, that if you take any natural number at all, call that n, and then any integer a, then a is congruent mod n to infinitely many integers. Okay, There's no finite list of integers to which a is congruent mod n, but there's exactly one element in the list 0, 1, 2, through n minus 1 that a is congruent to. So there is a least non-negative number that to which a is congruent modulo n. And we're going to call the fancy name for that integer is the least non-negative residue of a modulo n. And we're going to say that if I take a and find its least least non-negative residue, that smallest non-negative integer that it's congruent to mod n, we're going to say we are reducing that integer mod n. So let's look at some examples here. These are things we've already seen. So 16 is congruent to many, many things mod 5, but there's only one least non-negative thing it's congruent to mod 5, and that number is 1. So we would say that 16 is congruent to 1 mod 5. We reduce 16 to 1 mod 5 in other words. We also saw that 121 is congruent to many, many things, an infinite, an infinite list of numbers, but the smallest non-negative number to which it's congruent is the number 1 again. So we would say that 121 reduces to 1 mod 8. Uh, this it doesn't seem like reducing because we're going from a negative integer to a positive one, but negative 10 uh, is reduces to 2 mod 4 because that is 2 is the smallest non-negative integer to which 10 is congruent mod 4. Notice that each of these numbers that end up being the reduction of the numbers they started with are between 0 and the modulus. So 0, it's in this list 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is in the list 0, 1, all the way up to 7. And this is in the list 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we can always take an integer and reduce it to its least non-negative residue, and that's an important operation. Since this is kind of independent of the textbook, let's do two concept checks to make sure we understand what we're doing here. So what does the number 85 reduce to mod 9? Look at your options and come back in a moment with your answer. So we can rule two things out already, 76 and 9. Uh, because we're trying to reduce modulo 9, the answer has to be between 0 and 8. Okay, so anything that's outside the range 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 is wrong. Okay, so these other guys could possibly work here. So uh, what's it going to be? I think our answer is going to be C or 4. Uh, that is certainly in the range 0 through 8. Is 85 actually congruent to 4 mod 9? Well, yeah, it is because 9 divides the difference between 85 and 4. 85 minus 4, of course, is 81, and 9 certainly divides that. But it, that, that cannot be said for these other two guys here. So again, 85 reduces to a unique non-negative integer that's between 0 and 9 minus 1. Now, another concept check with the same question. What about the integer negative 12? What does that reduce to mod 6? This time I've screened out any uh, obviously wrong choices here. These are all in the realm of possibility 0 through 5. If I'm reducing something mod 6, it's going to reduce to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Which of those 6 integers is it going to be? In this case, the answer is 0. That is a non-negative integer, right? Uh, how do I know? Well, what is negative uh, 12 congruent to? Let's do this with the list here. Start with negative 12. It's congruent to itself. And uh, just start adding numbers onto it. The next mod 6. Not adding numbers, but adding the modulus onto it, 6. I need to go from negative 12 to negative 6. Negative 6 to 0. And there's my answer, the least non-negative integer to which negative 12 is congruent mod 6. There's a, there are obviously many other non-negative integers that are congruent to negative 12 mod 6. And of those, which one is the smallest? And that's that one. And that's our least non-negative residue. So this idea of reducing an integer to its least non-negative residue modulo n actually helps out in a number of different ways. Again, this isn't really touched upon in your book, but I think it's important to bring it up. So thanks for watching.